All right, let's get into it. So how would we code a simple Hello World project with React? Well, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have Node.js installed on your computer and you'll want the version uh, that works best for you. You can use the um, long-term support version, which is 12.16, I believe right here. And if you like more uh, current features, you can use 13. I prefer the long-term uh, supported version because especially when you work in production, a lot of the features that you might get that are kind of cool with 13 may not actually work for lower level platforms or lower level you know, applications that you might be trying to like port to. So it's always good to just kind of work for lower. And then you know, if you want to play around with new features, you can try it on your own machine. But for this particular tutorial, it doesn't really matter. You can use either one you like. And I believe I might even have the latest version. So I can always check I have Node by like typing Node in my command line over here. And I can say Node-V. And oh yeah, I have a more current version, 13.5. So that's fine for me. Again, this is my own personal computer, so totally fine. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you navigate over to a project folder of your choice. I made one called JavaScript LA, and uh, I'm just using the command line. Again, if you're not really familiar with the command line, you can always do everything that I'm doing more manually, just using a um, code editor and then saving uh, with the save command here. But as you grow as a developer, it only makes more sense to use the command line. And I'll put a card to what the command line is uh, somewhere up here that you can click and check out if you're really more interested in how it works and now you can get up to speed on it. This also works on Windows, just so you know, even though I'm on a Mac, you don't have to necessarily have a Mac to do any of these tutorials. You can always use Windows or you can use Linux too. And uh, if you know how to use Linux, then you probably don't need me to tell you that. Okay, so again, let's navigate over to a project folder and then make sure that you can use either your terminal or your code editor and you have Node installed. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that we have the script available from React that allows us to create a React app easily. And you can do this really manually if you want. You don't have to use create-react-app. I would recommend you use this particular command just because this makes your life a lot easier, especially if you just want to learn how React works. If you have to do a lot of JavaScript tooling using tool chains uh, like Webpack or Gulp or Broccoli or something else, it just kind of makes the whole process of web development, you know, just not fun, right? I talked about that in the beginning video. How do we integrate this into our product? Basically, if you have to play around with a lot of like, you know, back end and you can't even just do the React stuff that you want, it takes a long time and then it just kind of takes away from the whole argument that maybe we should move to React. So the Facebook team though did a really good job of putting together all the dependencies and tool chains that you need and they gave you a simple command that they put up on uh, Node's package manager resource. Think of this, this place as like a library you can go and get any project, uh, open source project that you want and pull it in that's supported by Node.js. So uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you install this particular script on your computer and you can just copy this, I think. Um, there's a little copy button here and then you can paste it. And this particular command is a local install. So if you want this command to be available anywhere in your project, use the dash G file and that'll make it global. So the next time, when you want to start a project, you can just say npx and then create-react-app. And before that, I'm actually going to make another folder just because my preference is to always have um, everything that I do in a sandbox folder, some kind of simple folder that I know, okay, this is not really ready for production yet. This is just, you know, a basic idea and you know, I just want to like throw in some test projects here. So I'll create a sandbox folder like I did right here. Now I'll use the command called npx and then I'll follow it by create react app like this. 
and um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, it's prompting me. Hey, what do you want to use with Create React app? What kind of directory do you want to call it? So I need to specify a project name. So I'm going to say hello world because that's what we're doing in this video today. So press enter and that'll take some time. It'll install a whole bunch of packages, including React, React DOM, React scripts with the CRA template. So that's create React app template. And so, yeah, it'll download a whole bunch of dependencies. Sometimes these dependencies are really huge and can take a long time. If you don't have internet access, you could be waiting up to a minute. But that said, again, that's better that you spend a minute just letting Facebook's team download all the dependencies that you need to use React as opposed to you manually trying to figure it out under the hood with Webpack or something like that. But for that, um, we'll talk about how you can use other tool chains like if you wanted to start this manually, more manually, let's say you have a bigger server side project that is not just Node.js, but you want to integrate you know, um, parts of React into your server, you might need a manual tool chain. So we'll talk about that. In fact, I have um, some instructions for those of you who are really interested, again, at my GitHub. And uh, you can basically go to this little readme file, install-react-manually. And I go through um, basically, uh, it's a lot longer, <laughs> but I go through all kinds of different examples you could use to um, install and use uh, Webpack, Babel, all the stuff that basically this does for you in one minute. Um, you can learn how this all kind of works under the hood, which is, I think it's actually pretty important to, as you get more advanced, you do kind of need to know what's under the hood. So that way, like if you need to, you know, integrate something with something else, you're more flexible rather than just kind of being like, well, I just only know how to use create react, react app. So, <laughs> so with that, we got our project um, ready to go. So the next thing we want to do is see and to hello world, which is what it's telling us right here. And then um, you'll want to use the command yarn and yarn is basically like NPM. Um, I'll pull up the website just so you can see it. So I think it's yarn JS. And I think the difference between Yarn and NPM, and I'll do a better video about what it is in detail, um, but I think like easiest said is that like Yarn is um, a dependency ma manager that like basically double checks a lot of your resources that you're downloading and make sure that you're not <laughs> downloading the same resources twice. It kind of removes like extra um, redundant dependencies. So. A lot of times when you are using an NPM project, sometimes like the projects that you pull down from uh, other NPM resources may also have their own NPM dependencies and those dependencies may conflict with your dependencies and it just becomes like this big, you know, um, confusing nightmare. So I think Yarn does a better job of looking through everything that's in, you know, your project files and folders, including the libraries that you're pulling down and uh, make sure that it's not you know, conflicting with each other. So uh, Yarn basically gets a vote of confidence, if you will, from, you know, most of the JavaScript community. And so for that reason, I think that's why more people are starting to use Yarn. So Yarn, again, you can replace this though with NPM start. Um, but if you're not using NPM, you can use Yarn start. And what this will do is basically, again, behind the scenes, it's doing a lot of different stuff, like the tool chain that I talked about, but it'll create a Webpack server that will open up a browser at this port localhost 3000 and here you'll see the spinning little it's kind of like a cute little atom <laughs> but that's the react atom um, and essentially if you want to change this page right this is the default page that you get out of the box what you would need to do is open up another um, command prompt here i'm just going to open up another tab and then i'm going to cd over to my project folder again so G javascript la and then sandbox and then cd hello world and then i would type code and then the directory that i want to open up and code is a special command that i got from using visual studio code basically what this does is it opens up visual studio code otherwise i'd have to manually do it and then basically um, navigate over to my project folder so i'll put a card up here on how to install this particular command if you want to run it from your command line but this is like a shortcut for me. So I press code or type code and then, you know, the project folder, which would be just this particular directory and press enter. 
And uh, this is my React app that I just got from create-react-app. And so then what I'd want to do is essentially, like it says here, it says edit source app JS and then save to reload. So I'm going to go to the app JS under the source folder. And then here I have some basic, um, you know, dummy code that you can see over here. This um, corresponds to, I guess, uh, let's see, edit the source app JS. So let's change this to uh, maybe just the AP JS. And you'll see that the AP JS gets updated. And I didn't have to actually refresh this browser at all. So that's really like a nice thing with React is that it does a lot of cool stuff under the hood for you, including like update your code, uh, rebundle it, and then um, show it up in the browser. So it makes your development process a lot faster. And for this reason, I actually like that aspect as opposed to editing a whole bunch of template files again, like on the server side in PHP, then having to you know, rebuild everything and then go and check it out on the production server or the staging server and then see, oh, did it actually update? Or even if I'm doing it locally, I still have to kind of refresh my, you know, Chrome browser and this kind of takes all that away, which is really, really nice. I can just kind of like start building really, really fast. If I want to get rid of the image, I can do that. I can just basically save it here and then boom, that thing is gone. I can get rid of everything if I want over here and just return a simple div and I can say, hello world, which is the point of this particular video. So there we go. Now you know how to install React and create a React app and create your first Hello World.